you, Gary? Hey, I'm great. Nice to see you again. Yeah, man. same to you. I think the last time we were in a car together was in Seattle, right? That's in right. The MDX. That's right. So, so one level above this one, right? That's right. Yeah. For Acura, but this is very different because, from my understand, this new RDX is based on a completely new platform from Acura, right? Nothing has been built on this before. Yeah, that's right. This is um, this is the next generation of Acuras, and so we basically started over trying to build from scratch basically the type of car that we wanted to build. So it's a new platform, new suspension, new seat, new HMI system, um, everything new in this car, literally almost everything. So obviously a ton of advantages in that, especially yeah. now that you need to be on top of the game in this segment because yeah. this is the most competitive segment made yeah. in the whole industry now, like uh, compact luxury crossovers. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, what we're seeing is a lot of different people and probably people that have driven cars their whole lives all of a sudden starting to switch over the segment. And I don't know if it's that, if it's that, you know, they, they just want it already for a switch or if it's that these, these types of vehicles have come to the point now where they offer so many benefits that cars don't offer and they really don't have a lot of sacrifice. But either yeah. way, it's really changing and a lot of people moving from cars into this and then a lot of people even coming from mainstream into this. And it's, it's very I exciting. I actually have a, an example of that. A, a good friend of mine, she was driving an Audi A4 Yep. and she, she switched to the Audi Q5. So, yeah. and like now, whenever she, for whatever reason, needs to get into a car, she's like, I'll, I don't like this anymore. So yeah. it's true. I mean, it's a simple, yeah. a, a small, sample of but that's like the tendency now like people like yeah. the utility the high seating and all that yeah. especially the new technology well that's what we hear a lot too is once people have driven especially with the high seating point yeah that seems to be the thing that they can't give up and they don't ever want to go back to the, the smaller feeling now, I, I like cars I like both yeah. but uh, but yeah it's definitely a lot of people feel, feel very strongly about it so uh, obviously everything being new what are the highlights you know our focus as a brand in general is performance so there's a lot of things things that people won't even see on the surface under the surface like I mentioned the new suspension much stiffer body a pretty exciting turbo four-cylinder engine that's new for us 272 272 horsepower, horsepower more than all the, the immediate competitors 280 uh, uh, yep. town support that's town right support. It's, you mentioned the torque that's what you really feel the, the old V6 was great a very powerful fast car but this one when you hit uh, as low as like 1600 rpm it's getting the full torque and it just pulls and pulls and pulls all the way up through the revs and so it's a it's a nice feeling you know if you're if you're trying to go for zero to 60 times you know the other way is fine but the actual normal kind of acceleration on a highway passing somebody it's much better and it, it works really well so better performance and more efficient to tool with yep. a smaller engine that's right yep exactly and then you know other than that I mean um, because this is next generation it's debuting our next generation of, of HMI so a completely new control system that we're really proud of that operates with basically a beautiful screen that's set back farther from the driver and controlled by a touchpad right here so by designing the interior completely different having this new system yeah. for the transmission that frees up a lot of space not only underneath but up here to implement the new uh, control system for the infotainment right yeah that's right so so we call the system true touchpad and the big thing that's different on this compared to other touch touchpad systems is that instead of being like a mouse where you have to keep swiping and swiping and trying to figure out where you're trying to be on the screen this one wherever you touch it is exactly where it is on the screen so if you want to go the, the top left corner you touch the top left corner yeah. and there you are and so we think it makes it a lot more easy to learn easy to use it's funny it's when I talk about it it's a little hard to figure out but once you start using it and you drive it for a day it just starts coming really naturally to you yeah and, because and you can develop doing. the memory to know where you are it's like a yeah. kind of a typewriter maybe when yeah. you know the S the yep. G that. yeah exactly. so here at the top you have three buttons across yep then the, the spaces here are as you said already said yeah so top left corner is navigation lower left corner is the the find option to all the other systems yeah and then here on the side you can actually replicate what you're doing on exactly. the other side of the screen yeah exactly so the screen's divided into two parts you can kind of you can choose whatever you want to look at whether it's you know this is obviously the clock you could look at navigation you could look at whatever audio you're listening to at the time of course we're not listening to anything right now and so it's great so I'll, I'll usually run mine with either the navigation on there or or carplay you know my, my phone and then on the right hand side i've got whatever whatever i'm listening to whether it's music or whatever or, yeah. yeah or podcast or something you know and and so uh yeah i love it and it's such a beautiful screen bright colors and so yeah we we wanted to make i mean we know that like a lot of current systems and a lot of different brands 
create frustration rather than pleasure. You know what I mean? It's I have I have to mention in yeah. that sense, not yeah. funny enough, but it's true. I mean, Lexus has a similar yeah. look, but the functionality is really difficult because you have to like use it as a mouse and lift, right. almost like lifting like the mouse. And it's like it's not easy to use. No, exactly. You just, yeah, you just end up never quite being where you want to be, and then getting frustrated. And so, yeah, we wanted to make something that would actually enhance your drive and make it easier. And you know, I mean, it was it was and safer because yeah. if you don't have to look down, it makes it much safer to drive. Yeah, and when you know when our when our team that researched this and studied this for a million hours proposed this kind of system, I mean, there were some people that really pushed back because touchpad seems like our touchscreen seems like the easier choice. Yeah, but right. you know, there's truth is there's a lot of things like that that are maybe easier to learn immediately, but but once you have to live with it, we think this is a much better system. And than, than and. Ex added advantage, I have to say, the screen keeps clean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No fingerprints. No, no. The fingerprints drive you crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like one of those things too, where you, if you test drive it at the dealership, you don't think about yeah. that. But once you own it and you're just constantly cleaning Having it, to clean it, yeah. Yeah, this one will stay just as nice as it ever was uh, from from beginning to end. We hope so. Yeah. Well, another thing that uh, got my attention is all the selection yeah. of the materials yep. are really, really nice. That's a huge upgrade. For example, yeah. here we have wood. Yep. And it looks like wood, but it's really wood. Like yeah. Same thing with the aluminum here, and yeah. uh, all the surfaces are like really nicely taken care of. Yep. No, and, and you know, to be totally honest, that that is one of the areas where we really recognize that the the old RDX needed to move forward. I mean, it's a nice car, but it just doesn't doesn't have that completely luxury feeling that, that you get with real materials, and you can't fake it. Yeah. You can't just use paint That's plastic. That's something that, like, if you yeah. see, like. Got your attention and it's like not the real thing. Are you saying? Yeah, that probably can turn out a lot of people out. Like yeah, from selecting the car, right? Yeah, you know that's one of the big things that, would, especially going forward, is going to be the difference between mainstream and luxury. Because there's people who like mainstream cars and they'll never maybe understand why somebody would even care about yeah. some of this stuff. But people who care about premium cars, who who buy it because they want a certain emotion, it's got to be real. Otherwise, it's it's not credible. It's not believable. And you don't have that that feeling that you're looking. for. Okay, I'm gonna put it here a little bit on the spot sure. because I Bring think <laughs> the non-luxury brands have made such leaps forward yep. that the gap between those top of the end of the line cars of the non-luxury car are very similar to the entry-level luxury cars now, like from mm -hmm. let's say Honda Acura or like Nissan Infiniti and like, yeah. on like Toyota Lexus. Yeah, no, you're right, and, and 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 honestly, that's that's why, especially talking about like the old RX, that's that's something we had to be worried about. Because, like you say, I mean, a nice mainstream car, really nice. And, yeah. and if the luxury car doesn't have the materials and the styling and the emotional things, I, I don't think there's a lot of reason to buy it. So that's what we that's what we really focused on. It's got all the technology and everything behind the scenes and, and a lot of the features that you you know that you expect in the price range. But but it's really those little touches, whether it's the driving performance, the styling, or, or the things you touch and see. Those are where we really put our, our effort into. So you men mentioned a price range, and uh, yep. one thing that caught my attention during this morning's presentation was that even the top of, of the line for the RDX, it's still like five to even twelve thousand yeah. dollars in some cases in price difference against the competition. So obviously we we mentioned there's a lot of competition, but mention a few of the of the models that you benchmark this yeah. against, like mainly because obviously the Europeans, I would think. That's right. Yes, I mean, you know, of course, you know, we're, we're accurate, so of course we're going to be cross-shopped against Lexus and Infiniti, but this time we really wanted to take, figure out who are the, which are the vehicles that people think are the best in the world, then let's make something better than that. And so we bought Audi Q5s and BMW X3s and Mercedes GLCs and all of the European brands and tested them and tested them to try to understand what they did well, what they didn't do well, and try to find a place where we could beat them in the things they're good at and then be even better in places maybe where they, where they fall short. And so, I don't know, I mean, obviously it's it's up to you, it's up to the customers who, who buy it, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Yeah. So the RDA was like pretty much the pioneer in this segment, like two yeah. generations ago, right? Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, you know, back, back a little bit more than 10 years ago, I mean, Basically, there was the BMW X3, and then just a little while later was was the RDX, and for a long time, those were the only two cars. And you dominated the sales in that segment, but I understand now you're like in third place. Yeah. So what happened was, so I mean, basically, we had the first generation of RDX was a pretty pretty low seller, maybe maybe twenty thousand or so units. It was, it was a little on the small side, and, 
it had some other things like that but when we came out with the second generation the 2013 model it just took off and so i mean it basically was the top volume seller for a few years in the segment now finally we're at the point now where where our vehicle is in its sixth year the 2018 model is the sixth year of that life cycle we're competing against brand new audis brand new uh, competitors so so yeah we've, we've we've slipped a little bit but actually with this vehicle we, we very much intend to sl slide right so back into first right place. now it's what lexus nx the number one yep that's segment. right lexus nx and audi q5 kind of battling out for number one well uh, another thing that we haven't mentioned uh, we talk about the power and all that but, it, but it, this also has like four driving modes right yeah yeah exactly so that that little switch you're, you're touching there i mean very much on purpose it, it's it looks a lot like what's in the nsx and so that was just a way for us to kind of try to capture that emotion and, and just like in the nsx you, you can change between different modes that really transform the car from from something quite comfortable to something very aggressive now of course this isn't an nsx yeah it's not. <laughs> but we know that that's that same sort of feeling, feeling that people yeah. want and so i mean i live in la i drive home from work it's 20 miles takes me an hour i don't want to drive fast i just want to be comfortable but I'm a guy who likes to drive, and so if I'm on the weekends, I want to be able to turn this knob, put it in Sport Plus, and really go for it. And you know, it's it's an SUV, but people don't want to have to give up fun to drive because of that. And so by by doing that and having some cool new technology like a, adjustable dampers, it allows you to really transform the car and, and give people those different experiences yeah, that they want. You were in uh, Whistler in uh, British Columbia, like I mean, it's not yeah. a race track where we can go like from we were like doing like yeah. 40 to like 80 like yeah. really quickly no and this is a perfect kind of place right because people are going to live in vancouver yeah. have crazy traffic take it easy and then come up here and have a really nice drive up to you know up to the ski resort or whatever whatever they're doing and and enjoy themselves yeah final uh, point um there was the strategy in, in terms of different versions i understand there's like the regular one and then the a spec right yeah that's right and so i kind of mentioned this earlier that a lot of people are coming into this segment from 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 very sporty sedans and so we what we've seen is we talked to a lot of those buyers and they, they're looking for something a little more aggressive a little more sporty a lot of them are younger buyers and so we've tried hard to basically provide different characters so the so the one we're in now this is a top of the line advanced so very comfortable car you know the styling is maybe a little bit more of the sophisticated kind of style you got the a spec which takes the same basic body of the car but puts on bigger wheels and black trim uh you know cool cool red and black leather and things like that that really give it a little bit more attitude to the edge and so yeah we're excited we, so we've got we've got different choices for people we think but, but uh, the engine the suspension and everything else is the same yep. basic okay. settings of the car are the same a lot of it's just styling and attitude but you already announced that you're coming up with a higher trim right the that's right sport plus it's called uh, no, so we're coming with the Type S now. Oh, you know, the Type S. We haven't said exactly which model it's going to be for, right? So, so we're kind of waiting to, to give all the details on that. But yeah, Type S, you know, was the performance line of Acura several years ago. It's something we're bringing back to really symbolize what we're kind of capable of and what we care about as a brand. And so maybe that will be our next drive. Maybe it will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. My pleasure.